Hello fellow unicorns, welcome to another video and long time no see. Today I'm doing a special video with my friends from the YouTube Artist Collective and thank you guys so much for always vote voting on the next topic for us to draw and this time the topic was vintage. Um, I know I have been away from YouTube for a while and uh, I really have to say that uh, the state of YouTube has made a lot of us just go and find some work elsewhere. Uh, if you guys want to be up to date with my latest works, I suggest following the links down below to my Twitter, Tumblr, Patreon page and uh, you can communicate there with me daily if you're interested in all the new stuff I am working on. As for the videos, I will try to be more active, but I make no promises because my loyalty still lies with the YouTube Artist Collective and all the amazing people who actually try to keep this uh, movement alive. So I'm definitely putting this piece of art out there as a video because of them mostly. And uh, this is a work that was commissioned by one of my patrons, Edward, and he wanted me to do a piece based on a concept of merging um, gothic and a samurai. And this is how I went on to see some really old piece of artwork from uh, feudal Japan and to combine something with like a modern goth type of aesthetic. and. To make it all fit into the vintage theme, I wanted everything to look like a really old paper tapestry. That's why I used the warm gray Copic number two to fill out the basically the entire piece, entire um, entire surface of the paper, because then I will not be having any pure white areas, and this will help me achieve that vintage look more successfully. Uh, also for a vintage looking kind of a paper and artwork it's always good to use colors that are more muted like warm grays or warm browns or tons of different skin colors that I, sh that I have showcased before at the very beginning of the video. So. I'm, I will be using some really watered down uh, shades of colors. I will be using some really watered down reds and browns and I will be explaining my concept to you guys visually as well as ideologically and storytelling wise um, as well. I wanted this samurai to have like two swords. You can see one of the swords has a handle that features uh, some steampunk looking clockwork. I wanted to have at least some steampunk influence I guess not just only gothic or not just only uh, samurai i wanted to have a lot of different inspirations so i used like the shape of a samurai's uh, skull and a helmet and transplanted onto the chest piece this is something that you can see a lot of in anime and different games where you have like a face on the character's belly or maybe even like a huge mouth and stuff so this is something that literally combines the the game aesthetics like video game aesthetics and fashion design and i used a lot of corset bindings throughout this uh, armor because the samurai armor usually features a lot of um little blades and little plates that are bound together with some cross stitches so this was perfect just to turn into like a design from a gothic corset and it flowed really really well really successfully if i may add um the red i'm using is i think coral red this is not the pure red copic that usually that i usually use in my art i wanted it to look really diluted i wanted it to look really mellow to achieve this vintage paper look um and I like that I will be probably going to my other friends from YouTube Artist Collective and stalking their channels to see what they uh, thought of when they heard the word vintage. Um, sorry about my language barrier, we really have troubles uh, with <laughs> some letters in the English alphabet, well saying them at least. So. I really hope you guys don't mind. Uh, anyways, I really, really am excited to see what other people um, thought of while 
thinking on the topic of vintage. I really love all things vintage. I really love everything from ancient um, ancient types of fabrics and papers and fashions uh, to the retro and Victorian and pinup and there's so many retro and vintage things you can draw and the, the, the it's like the possibilities are limitless and this is why I really 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 love this topic and wanted to explore more of it as, uh, as for the, the inspiration for this design for this character, um, I wanted him to have two blades. Um, one blade was inspired by, uh, I think her name in Japanese lore is Sakura Hime, like a princess of cherry flowers. And she has the, well, influence over the clock sword because I wanted her sword to be able to turn back time, maybe heal wounds. Uh, do some spiritual healing even so it's like a benevolent sword as for the other sword I, I saw this um, uh, drawing of a skeleton in a tapestry somewhere and I wanted it to be like uh, upgraded to like a fire demon and wanted it to be connected to his other sword so one of his swords can heal and turn back time on like wounds and stuff and the other one can really do some great damage so we have a balance overall and we have someone that has a power of great destruction but also great healing as a balance of course probably writing a character like this would be really tricky because he would then be considered like a Gary Stu to powerful too overpowered maybe he would be the villain in the story who knows like people who hold or want to hold ultimate power usually are the bad guys in in manga and anime because they can't control it and they just want it for something personal some personal gain so who knows maybe i just invented the villain <laughs> of a cool story that will never be written but still um I really really love playing with this design and this concept and these shapes and this fashion motifs so I really like it when my my commissioners and my patreons go out there and just give me the the, the liberty to think of stuff I want to implement I do consult them a lot but usually they're like oh just go nuts do your thing I, I love it when they ask me to do something in my own personal style uh, because my personal style usually goes to Ayami Kojima's style as well and I am starting to really get influenced by this ever since the New Castlevania series was out um, I can't even start to explain how much that style reminded me of why I wanted to do manga as an art style so in any case this is the finished product and I have taken the liberty of pulling it through some digital um, editing and wanted to create it into a more uh, bleached version of itself so it looks more vintage and more print ready. Uh, I might add some additional um, different types of uh, textures and maybe even put it on as a print in my online shop so everybody is welcome to check it out in the links down below and let me let me know what you thought of this work inspired by the topic that you guys voted on and that was vintage thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you would like to learn how to draw manga please check out my book Manga Crash Course available in four different languages as well as my latest book Manga Crash Course Fantasy.